How much money do real estate agents actually make? Millions. <laughs> Welcome to the channel where I do weekly videos on tips, tricks and strategies for buyers, sellers, investors. This week's video is a little bit different. It's one of the most common questions that I get asked. How much do real estate agents actually make? So today I'm going to break down a bunch of numbers, a few different scenarios so you can get a better idea of what we actually make. Now before we go into this, do us a favour, give us a like, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That just helps me keep this weekly content coming. All right, let's dive in. Let me get the whiteboard here so we can look at these numbers together. Now in any market, the median home value rises and falls, but in Denver right now, the median home value is right around 500,000. Let's round it up so we can keep the math nice and easy. Now the most common number that people know is 6%. How do you know that? Because you watch Million Dollar Listing and you have all these ideas about real estate agents who make 6% and the 6% of 500,000 is, $30,000. So they make $30,000? No, that's entirely inaccurate as you're about to see as we break down these numbers. But there is the common misconception for sure that we make 6% of every single transaction that we do. But in a perfect world, we are getting 6% from the seller. Now, how it works is the seller of the home pays all the commission for the real estate agents. That 6% goes to the listing agent who's selling the home and he or she distributes the money out from there. So let's start to break that down. So 6% of 500,000 is $30,000. Excellent. But straight away, we're giving half of that to the buyer's agent. So half of $30,000 is, yes, $15,000, which is still a lot of money, but it's half of where we started and maybe what you thought I was taking home with me. Okay, so we still have $15,000 in our hands. This is great. But now we have to give a big chunk of that away to the brokerage. The brokerage takes anywhere from 20 to 40% usually. So let's split the difference in, let's say, 30%. So that's going to be $4,500. Give that to the brokerage and that's gone. All right, so that money's gone. Now we have tax. Now. You want to be conservative with your tax as well because you don't want to come up short towards the end of the year. So let's do 30% on tax. That's going to be just over $3,000 that we give to the tax man. All right, so that's two big chunks out of the way. Regardless of any transaction, you're dealing with your brokerage split and your tax. Now let's look at other things specific to that deal, especially with the listing agent. You got photos, you got videos, you got Facebook ads, You've got print ads. There's a lot of different things. If you're a good broker that you're putting into the listing at your own expense to get the deal done. All right, so we just took off quite a lot off the top. So let's break that down. So we started at $30,000. That was a big chunk of change that we just got. Okay, we took off the buyer's agent. We took off the brokerage split. We took off our taxis. We took off photos, videos, Facebook ads and print ads and that thirty thousand dollars just dwindled all the way down to sixty three hundred six thousand three hundred dollars is what we're left with after all our expenses for this transaction that's a lot less now i know what you're thinking that's still a lot of money yeah it absolutely is sixty three hundred dollars in my pocket is phenomenal i love it so that's what happens in one transaction so let's look at some other expenses for the year so our whole year as a real estate agent, we have some different expenses that come into play. Operational expenses include your realtor fees, which are around about $500 to be represented by the National Association of Realtors, which is a huge thing that you should be doing. Your errors and emissions insurance. This is a must with every brokerage that you step foot in. You have to have insurance to cover you. That's going to be about $650 for the year. Continuing education is another one to keep your license you have to do continuing education. You can't just set a real estate license and then be like, ah, cool, I'm good. No, you have to continue this and keep on learning and progressing as you go along. 
So you're spending anywhere between 300 to 500 dollars per year and then depending on how much you spend on marketing you might do anywhere from two thousand dollars to twenty five thousand dollars depending on how much you spend on leads on marketing and all that good stuff so those are some numbers to be aware of now let's break this down even more so let's take that sixty three hundred dollars that we made from that transaction and we're going to break that down into an hourly wage and this is where it gets interesting Pay attention if you want to become a realtor check this out okay so let's get back to our scenario of the sixty three hundred dollars we made for that listing and let's break down what happened in that listing now an agent like myself works about 10 hours a day on average now that's just me of course but i work hard for my clients and i go all in so take that 10 hours a day and let's start from the start let's do seven days to get it ready for the property now if you haven't watched my video about how to sell your home in two days, check that out because that will tell you how to get your home ready for the market. You got to clean it, you got to prep it, you got to do social marketing, and there's a ton of other things that goes into that seven day. If we can get 14 days, that would maybe be better, but we're going to go seven days on this example, okay? So one week to get this ready for the market. So the average days on market in Denver right now is about 16, okay? So just over two weeks. Now, during that time, I'm holding open houses, I'm doing private showings, I'm driving around marketing this property, talking to agents and selling this on the seller's behalf. Now, does that take up 10 hours of my day? No, but it takes up a significant chunk that I've dedicated to selling this home. So after that 16 days on average, we go under contract. Excellent, money's gonna be coming in. So most contracts are gonna be about 30 days, maybe 15, maybe 10, but let's go with the average 30 day contract. Okay, so that's another 30 days where you're doing all your contracts, all the paperwork, all the legal stuff that you need to get this home ready to close. So let's add up all those days. That's 53 days times 10 hours is 530 hours. That's a lot of hours. Now let's take our $6,300 that we made for the transaction. Let's divide that by 530 hours. And it comes out to a grand total of $11.88 an hour. Wait. What? Now that might have not been a number you were expecting to see on this video and obviously things change. You may have five homes under contract which bumps that all the way up but you may have zero homes under contract so you may be working for less than that. It all depends on how busy you are as an agent and how much you dedicate to selling homes. Now obviously all these numbers can change. If you have a million dollar listing you're going to make much more. If you have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar condo it's going to be a lot less so it really depends on how much the home is worth and how much you're selling it for and how much you work for those clients obviously these numbers completely vary before you go in the comments and start slamming all my math just remember prices can vary which make the price higher and lower commission splits can be higher and lower sellers sometimes negotiate hard on the actual split so six percent could drop all the way down to four percent or whatever but really what you need to keep in mind is how much work goes into this job. It's not for the faint hearted. It's 100% commission based work. There's no salaries involved here. It's not bonuses. We work extremely hard for what we do. So next time you meet someone who's in real estate, don't judge them too quick as a scummy salesperson who's there to take all your money and spend it on Rolexes and fancy cars. Although that would be nice, but most of us don't do that. Talk to them and find out how hard they work for their clients. Myself and my team, we work extremely hard for our clients. We are diligent in what we do and we provide tremendous value in every transaction that we go through. So hopefully that sheds a little bit of light into what we do and how much money comes out of the big check that we get from the closing table. We're not all Scrooge McDuck rich, but we do work diligent and hard for our clients. So. Stay tuned. Next week, we'll be having another video up here on tips and tricks for buyers, sellers, and investors. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that, and I will see you next time.